Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about an MR structure determination of peptidomimetic drug leads. Miller molecules, which are macrocyclic peptidomimetic compounds with one to three kilodalton molecular weight, are key part of a diverse drug platform that expand the ability to exploit novel targets and mechanisms. These Miller molecules work by modulating immune responses. They inhibit protein-protein interactions, thus leading to dramatic advances in immuno and cancer therapies. These compounds in the two to three kilodalton space, they are large enough to produce a surface area, which is capable of inhibiting protein-protein interactions. These macrocyclic peptides have advantages over antibodies such as oral administration. They do not require IV infusion like biologics normally do. They have improved tissue penetration. They do not induce a large immune response, cost-effective production, and more amenable to quality control are some of the advantages. As a novel drug modality, Miller molecules, they present numerous challenges and opportunities. They require extensive and detailed analysis. They possess characteristics of both small molecule and protein. Their secondary structure shows varied degrees of conformational heterogeneity. They tend to have poor solubility in water, thus requiring binary solvent mixtures for solubility. At various stages of discovering millimolecular drug molecules, our NMR group at BMS has partnered with the discovery teams to obtain structural and protein binding information on these unique and challenging cyclic peptides that contain modified amino acids with optimized activity and permeability. NMR spectroscopy and X-ray crystallography are the two main techniques that are used to obtain structural information. They are complementary and each has its own advantages and challenges dealing with Miller structure. While X-ray provides 3D structures in solid state and is dependent on obtaining high resolution diffracting crystals, which are very difficult to obtain, especially for Miller, NMR provides solution state structural information at physiological pH and has built-in dynamic information, which is very relevant when looking at interaction with the proteins that these molecules bind to. NMR parameters report on the chemical environment around the atoms and provide structural information such as solution conformation, solvent exposure, backbone flexibility, and presence of conformational heterogeneity. Over the years, we have engaged with the Miller Chemistry, X-Ray, and our CAD groups to help with SAR, structure activity relationship, protein binding, and to obtain 3D structures. This structural information helps us to understand the effect of changes in the primary sequence to conformation and with side chain interactions. They also inform on the SAR for this series of molecules, how the structure is affecting the activity. They also inform, uh, structure is also useful to help model peptide docking into the target protein and whether peptide conformation changes upon binding. Further, we can compare the solution versus the X-ray crystal structure to know if the folds are similar in solution versus the solid state. Studying the structure also helps in designing of novel millimolecular folds, as have been recently reported in literature and that the chemistry is interested in, for example, uh, helical peptides and various kinds of other scaffolds. We started collaborating early on with our Miller chemists to look at various aspects of structural information that we could gather even from a simple 1D NMR proton spectrum. Different parts of the amino acid chain, they have different chemical shapes that are in turn dependent on the type of the fold. 
most of the millers that we have uh, designed in our labs in the BMS, they have been beta hairpins. In the 1D proton spectrum shown here at the bottom, the downfield shifted alpha protons and large NH to H alpha coupling values are indicative of an extended conformation as opposed to helical conformation. In order to carry out structural analysis by NMR, the first requirement is obtaining good dispersion and sharp peaks that depend on solution conditions like solvent, pH, temperature, and concentration. So we spent some time to optimize the solution conditions to obtain NMR spectra with desirable qualities in biologically relevant systems containing polar solvents. For example, we first looked at the existing 1D NMR spectra in the MSO and methanol that have been generated by the high throughput purification group for compound registration. Combing through these, we realized that although the DMSO spectra, they are good for fingerprint generation, but because of the presence of broad and overlapping peaks, they're not really useful for detailed structural analysis. We tried several solvent conditions, including aqueous buffers, and found water acetonitrile mixture to be a very good solvent for the needed solubility, as well as for obtaining sharp peaks. Shown here, on the right are the same five peptides acquired in the aqueous organic mixture solvent system. And as you can see, that nicely resolved peaks are observed for most of the peptides, which are characteristic of well-behaved millers with rigid defined conformations. So based on these results, a 70-30 mixture of water acetonitrile was used for all the subsequent NMR work. These are 1D spectra of similar peptides in this solvent shown on the left. The top three with well-resolved and sharp lines, they were selected for detailed NMR characterization. These MILA molecules, they produce complex spectra and not all the peptides, as I mentioned, they show well-resolved spectra even in the aqueous systems. For some of them, aggregation was observed that required us to work with dilute samples. Another common observation was the presence of multiple peaks consistent with the presence of conformational mixtures. We used the multiple conformations observation to our advantage for screening millers for crystallization. These miller molecules are very difficult to obtain well diffracting crystals of. Our X-ray colleagues have set up hundreds of screens and are lucky to get any crystals at all. We noticed early on that there is a correlation between the conformational heterogeneity observed as multiple peaks in NMR spectra Two, the crystallizability of these compounds. Considering the difficulty in obtaining Miller crystals, canvassing 1D spectra helped focus these efforts for better crystallization success. For a Miller sample containing multiple conformations, for example, here, the major conformation gives rise to the larger set of doublets that are shown by the blue arrows here. For this peptide, one each for leucine and valine highlighted in the red boxes on the structure. Whereas minor conformations give doublet peaks in different ratios shown by the red arrows here. So we use this canvassing of spectra for crystallization efforts triaging. We evaluated hundreds of samples across programs and based on the quality of NMR data, which is presence of sharp peaks, presence of single or multiple conformation, good resolution, and all these characteristics that are tabulated here for some of the peptides. We recommended several candidates to be added to the crystallization queue. For example, for this particular set that I'm showing here, we screened 27 Mila compounds and recommended only three for crystallization. And out of these, Recently, uh, uh, the ones marked here, they gave crystals that diffracted at one angstrom. 
that had previously crystallized and showed an excellent quality NMR spectrum. Moving on to solution confirmation determination of miller molecules. We can get a lot of qualitative information about the various structural aspects right from the 1D NMR spectra. For example, solvent shielding, exposure info for the amides by measuring temperature coefficients and exchange with deuterium. The temperature coefficients give insight into solvent shielded versus solvent exposed protons. For example, for this particular peptide, temperature data on the left shows NHs 7, 9, and 10 shown in uh, red color uh, bars. They are solvent shielded. We also observed another interesting phenomenon here. Some of the coefficients are positive for residues 2, 4, and 13. This is explained by magnetic deshielding of amide protons by the adjacent aromatic groups and also could be a result of a physical shielding from the aqueous solvent by these aromatic groups. Flexibility of the peptide in solution means the coefficients may not exactly match with what is observed in the X-ray hydrogen bonds for some residues. Measuring NH exchange with bulk water is another way to obtain similar hydrogen bonding information. Uh, the spectra here, they are overlay of a presat and a flipback proton 1D spectra. Unchanged intensity of the NHs on presat uh, points to hydrogen bonded NHs because hydrogen bonding shields the amide proton from chemical exchange with bulk water. The solvent exposed amides uh, exhibit strong chemical exchange saturation. Uh, the two main NMR parameters that are used for generating 3D structures are NOEs and chemical shifts. But first, we need to fully assign the molecule. We use macromolecular assignment methods that use sequential correlations from 2D to COSY, TOXY, NOSY, and HSQC spectra to obtain complete proton and carbon chemical shift assignments of every amino acid in the chain. NOE through space correlations shown by arrows on the structure on the top right give interatomic distances. The nosy peak intensities, they are converted into distances by cyana program. The other type of constraints that we use in structure calculation are torsion angle ones that are derived from backbone coupling constants. For example, a 3J NH H alpha coupling constant of greater than 9 hertz indicates extended backbone. So together using all these constraints, we calculated the 3D structures using Cyana software. Uh, using NOE and torsion angle restraints, we used Cyana program to obtain structured ensembles of these millimolecules. One example of uh, structure of such an inhibitor is shown here. On the left is the cyanogenerated structure ensemble using 212 distance constraints. The lowest energy 10 structures, they have a very good RMST of backbone atoms as 0.37 angstrom and all atoms are MSD of 0.55 angstrom. On the right is the overlay of this apopeptide with the crystal structure of peptide bound to protein. There is a remarkable simil similarity in overall fold of NMR structure to protein bound crystal structure. Majority of side chains qualitatively align between crystal structure and NMR. This shows a case where the APO structure of the peptide is preserved in solution. Uh, 
We have further refined the structure using SF tools that contains a better force field and algorithm for molecules of this size. Here I would like to point out the advantages of using the ACD NMR workbook in this peptide assignment workflow. We are already experienced with using ACD NMR workbook for small molecules, so there was no learning curve when we applied it to the peptide assignments. ACD further has excellent visualization of 2D toxy nosy correlations on the structure and it shows unassigned atoms as I have captured in uh, the middle figure here. Uh, further assignments are carried over to all the spectra in the project, thus facilitating quicker and complete assignment. It shows color-coded match of observed with the predicted proton and carbon chemical shape which was very useful in real-time validation of unnatural amino acids assignments that many of our peptides contain. We can readily generate assignment and NOE peak list using uh, the default ACD buttons provided. However, uh, more customization is needed for cyanar readable assignments and NOE peak tables and we are currently using Sparky for generating these peak lists and also working with ACD to provide us peak lists in uh, this format. So just, I would like to just capture the improvements along the way during all these uh, peptide assignments and structure, uh, structure calculation work. We revamped our protocols and software for semi-automated NMR based 3D structure determination. We heavily used ACD NMR workbook for assignments. Since 2015, we have made several contributions to the development of biomolecular assignment tools. And some of the recent releases, they contain the latest pe peptide analysis improvements that we requested. And we are working with ACD for further customizations. We have implemented Sparky software, which is a graphical NMR assignment and integration program for biomolecules. Uh, and it helps us in generating the Cyana input files. We use the Cyana software's built-in NOE assign module to rapidly assign NOE peaks and generate upper bound lists. We implemented superior force fields to derive 3D structure ensembles by utilizing the novel force gen protocol within the Surflex software that we are working with Dr. AJ Jain at UCSF. In the end, I would like to acknowledge um, our many collaborators from the RMR group, from the chemistry, from uh, external collaborators without whom this work would not have been possible. And thank you so much for your attention.